In the first presentation on the synoptic problem, I talked a little bit about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, who these people were, uh, at least as we understand it traditionally. These books were written 2,000 years ago. Uh, the question is, how do we figure out, or one question that would come to mind is, how do we figure out when these ancient books were written? Uh, our calendar that we have now was not created until long after the writing of the New Testament books uh, due to Christian influence. And so then we have dates uh, going back. Uh, a dating system was created based on taking all the data that we had from different dating systems and creating one that's really built around uh, the birth of Jesus as being the dramatic turning point in history. And so we have this phenomenon of uh, AD dates and BC dates, or nowadays, you know, the uh, uh, C. Uh, uh, CE dates and BCE, uh, but, um, uh, but all of that was created after the fact or developed after the fact based on the data that we have. Uh, so dates are, are uh, questionable. There are, uh, it's difficult to pin down exactly when everything happened and therefore it's also difficult to pin down exactly when these books were written. Furthermore, although there are some historical references inside of the books that might be of, of great interest in trying to figure out when these books are written, a lot of that is speculative. It's very speculative, for example, uh, to try to figure out what the circumstances were when Matthew wrote his gospel that he might be writing in light of. Uh, a lot of uh, scholars, for example, like to say that Matthew's writing uh, perhaps later in the first century when there was a lot of conflict between the Jewish synagogue and the Christian church. And that uh, kind of intense conflict is reflected in some of the dialogues that are contained in the book. The problem with that is it's extremely speculative. And there were other periods of intense conflict. So even if the, the, the premise is sound, that conflict uh, might have given rise to some of the focus of the gospel of um, Matthew, it still doesn't allow us to narrow it down to a particular decade or to a particular few years that we know for sure that this gospel must have been written in. So scholars have varied in their dating of these various books. I think we can say with great certitude that the, the gospels had to be written, let's say for example, after 30 AD because the events that they describe happen by that time. Uh, so it, it, that we couldn't suggest, for example, that they were written in 20 uh, AD uh, unless we totally and radically change up the chronology of the life of Jesus or the dating of the life of Jesus. I think uh, pr it's pretty standard and pretty recognized that the Gospels had to have been written sometime after 30 AD. In fact, most scholars think substantially after that. And then, of course, the, the outermost uh, date that we could have for the writing of the Gospels would have to be around 90 or 100 AD uh, because these writings are already, in some ways, being circulated around the ancient world. Uh, for example, we even have some, uh, some pieces of the Gospel of John that have survived uh, in ancient papyri. And these, uh, these ancient pieces of John's Gospel that have survived date to the first half of the second century. Uh, and so the Gospel had already been circulated around, uh, you know, in, in the area of Egypt and so on by the time we get to, say, 20, 30 years into the second uh, century. So scholars are pretty convinced that we have to date these Gospels within that, say, 60 or 70 year window after the life of Jesus, sometime between 30 and 100. Now, most scholars want to try to now narrow it down even more than that. That's a, quite a wide range of, of dates. Although, even though it's a, a wide range of dates, it is a, a fairly uh, narrow margin of time. So then at that point, the arguments become uh, varied as to uh, uh, where we're going to place the, the writing of the Gospels. I would say that generally speaking, most scholars work, work within the dates of say 60 to 80 or 85 or so AD, certainly for the Synoptic Gospels. And there's a variety of considerations that lead to that uh, conclusion. For example, the ancient testimony about Mark writing his Gospel in uh, Rome around the time of the persecutions there, and around the time that uh, Peter is in Rome. And based on other data that we have, if that's a sound uh, uh, claim, uh, that would place that uh, writing somewhere in the early 60s, somewhere around 60 or so. Uh, if, uh, if that's true, and if Matthew and Luke made use of Mark, which most scholars think was probably the case, at least they used his basic outline and some of the wording that he, he uses based on Peter, if there's a relationship between Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, of using these sources, then that would put Matthew and Luke written sometime after Mark. Now, how long after is a question. Maybe five years later, maybe 20 years later, uh, maybe, maybe something else. Uh, John's Gospel usually is dealt with sort of all on its own. John, from what we know, lived to be an elderly man. Um, most scholars think that the theology of John's Gospel is, is uh, uh, so developed that it reflects decades of reflection and thinking about Jesus and understanding him theologically, uh, so that uh, that would put it somewhere in the 80s or 90s of the first century. Uh, but there are, at the same time, other scholars who place John's Gospel uh, in the 40s and 50s, uh, for instance. Uh, there was an interesting book written by uh, 
uh, uh, many years ago called uh, redating the, the Synoptic Gospels or re redating Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And uh, in that book, it, it tried to make the argument, uh, John A.T. Robinson is the author, uh, he argued that uh, since the four Gospels never speak of the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem as an already accomplished event, which that happened in 70 A.D., and the temple was such a significant part of the Jewish religion and the world in which the New Testament uh, came about and the story of Jesus happened, that uh, he found it implausible to think that the temple had already been destroyed at the time the Gospels were written, and they would have never referred to it as something that had already occurred. Uh, and so he dates all of the Gospels, uh, John included, prior to the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. I mentioned in the first presentation that uh, the book of Acts, written by Luke, as second, the second part of his work, uh, speaks of Paul in prison in Rome at the end of his book. Uh, that has always, to my mind at least, not everyone, uh, but at least to my mind, that's always been a, a decisive point that the book of Acts, also reflecting on the book of Luke, as far as the time that it was written, the book of Acts was most reasonably written in the early 60s of the first century. If that's true, then Luke was also written, in, uh, certainly by the latest, at the early 60s of the first century. Uh, then what does that do with Matthew and Mark? Well, the question here is, and this is what I want to focus on now, the question of all of this is, is there a literary relationship between Matthew, Mark, and Luke? Or Matthew, Mark, and Luke, did, did any of these writers know about the other one? Did they know what the others had written? And if they did, who wrote first? And who used who is the question. Now, where does this come from? It comes from what I said in the first presentation on the Synoptic Gospels. And by the way, the word synoptic, uh, I should have defined this at the beginning. The word synoptic uh, is a word that was coined a, a few centuries ago. Uh, scholar Greisbach was his name. Uh, uh, um, he, he used the word synoptic to refer to the fact that the, the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, give to us sort of three looks at Jesus. They're really telling the same story, but they're doing it with a little bit different perspective, a little bit different focus. The word synoptic is the combination of two Greek-based words. Soon means with or alongside of, and um, uh, optic means to see, has to do with the seeing. And of course, we use the word in English that way. So synoptic literally means to see together. So the three uh, synoptic gospels are those that are really looking together at the life of Jesus using the same outline, the same structure, and all of that. Uh, but they have some variations, and so there's a little different focus that they have. John's gospel is not counted among the synoptic gospels because he doesn't use the same outline. He doesn't use the same structure. So, and I want to go back to outline of Mark's gospel in a moment, or, or perhaps in, a, in another presentation, but let me try to make clear uh, the way this has gone in uh, contemporary scholarship. Most contemporary scholars think that Mark wrote, of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, of the Synoptic Gospels, Mark wrote first. Now the reason for that is because Mark has the least amount of material that is unique to him. In other words, we find a lot of what Mark says, sometimes word for word, but often in summary form, we find a lot of what Mark says in Matthew and Luke. But Matthew and Luke have a lot of other things in addition to what Mark has. And most scholars think that it's more convincing to think that Mark uh, wrote his gospel and the other ones took all, basically all of what he wrote and added to it, rather than Mark just took some of what the others wrote and left the, the rest out. Uh, so it seems more reasonable to most scholars that Mark wrote his gospel first, and then Matthew and Luke borrowed from his writing, his basic structure, and then added to that and built on it. Now, we shouldn't think of this in terms of 21st century plagiarism or anything like that. All of these people writing uh, believe that the story of Jesus was the common uh, property of the church. So when Mark tells his story, he's telling his story based on Peter's memories. Peter and all the apostles shared these common memories of Jesus. And so he writes his down, and so Matthew wants to write a gospel for a little different audience or a little different purpose. It seems obvious that Matthew's writing for a Jewish audience. And so he writes his gospel, uh, building on it things that would be particularly useful in dealing with a Jewish audience. Mark is writing his gospel for Roman Christians, people in Rome, uh, which would be some Jews, some Gentiles, and so on. And so he writes a story that sounds a lot like the preaching of Peter.
Uh, it's a fast-moving gospel. If you read through Mark, you'll find that he moves rapidly from story to story. In Matthew's gospel, we have a lot more of Jesus' teachings. In Mark, very little of Jesus' teachings. It's mostly Jesus doing things. It's Jesus going out and acting and, and performing miracles and so on. In, in, um, uh, in Matthew's account, a lot of the uh, teachings of Jesus, and the same thing in Luke's gospel, you find a very heavy concentration of parables and, and things of that sort. So, uh, so what's the relationship between these Gospels? Well, let me briefly uh, show you, and, uh, just, and then we'll elaborate on it later on. But uh, let me just briefly show you the, 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 the standard theory that's out there. It's modified in various ways by different scholars. But the standard theory, theory of how the Gospels are related to each other is something like this. I'm going to put an M on this whiteboard. The M represents Mark's Gospel. And so Mark, according to the theory that I'm describing now, wrote first, and Matthew, that I'm representing by the MT here, uh, benefited from Mark's writing. So Mark was taken up by Matthew, and then Matthew builds on his basic skeletal outline. And then also Luke, that I'll represent by LK, Luke also benefited from Mark's gospel. So Mark wrote his gospel first. Luke used Mark, adding to it and building on it. And Matthew also uh, drew from Mark's gospel and built upon it. Now, th there's another question that arises, though. And the question is, what about all the things that Matthew and Luke have in common that are not found in Mark? Uh, there are a fair number of things, about 200 verses worth of material, approximately, that Matthew and Luke have in common that are not found in Mark's gospel. So this leads many scholars to think that there must have been another ancient source. There must have been another ancient writing uh, that told the stories of Jesus, primarily his teachings, because that's what's what these books tend to have in common. So primarily teachings of Jesus were taken uh, from this other source. Well, we don't have another ancient source of writing about Jesus' teachings that they could have used, and therefore the uh, scholars speculate that there must have existed another source, and they give it a name. The name that they give it is Quella, uh, Q-U-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, which is the German word for source. So they say there, was a, there must have been another source uh, that was then drawn into Matthew and Luke. Uh, and so it would look something like this. You see the Q, the Q source, is primarily Jesus' teachings. And those are drawn into Matthew and Luke. Mark's gospel, which is primarily Jesus' actions, things that he does, is drawn into Matthew and Luke as well. And so those two sources are blended together and developed in the case of Matthew and Luke. I'd better stop there, but I'll continue that thought uh, in the next presentation.